Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about the human eye. So when you think of the human eye, we can, it is that particular part of our body which enables us to see the beautiful things around us. So when it goes dark, we feel that we are missing out something, right? So it helps us to see or it helps us to see whatever is present in front of us. Now, the question is, how can such a small part of our body, if you see, just a small part of our body is enabling us to see everything all over around us. But how is such a magical thing actually happening? Now, in order to understand that, first we will have to understand the structure of the human eye. What are the different things which are present inside the eye and the function of each of them? So, where is the eye located? So, the eyes exist in pairs. So, we have two eyes, right? So, it exists in pairs and they are located in the sockets of the skull which are called orbits. So if you look at a skull, you have two sockets. So these are the sockets where the eyes are located and these sockets are known as orbits. So your eyes are placed inside these sockets. So let us look at the different components of the eye. Now eye is made up of three layers. The outermost layer is the sclera, the next layer is choroid and the innermost layer is retina. So where is the outermost layer? So here you can see this is the outermost layer which is sclera. The next layer is the choroid and the innermost layer that is this innermost layer that is the retina. So these are the three layers of the eye. Besides the three layers of the eye, we have other important parts as well. Cornea. Where is cornea? It is this front portion of the eye, which is the white visible portion of the eye. That is cornea. Next is the aqueous humor. It is this portion between cornea and the lens. So this portion is aqueous humor. I mean, it is filled with a fluid which is called aqueous humor. So that is aqueous humor. The third is pupil. So pupil is this central portion. If you see the central portion of the eye. So where you can see the eyeball. So the center of the eyeball that is the pupil. Next is iris. Iris is the portion which is sur which surrounds the pupil. So you can say that the center of the iris is the pupil. So if you look at your eyeball you can actually see that at the center you see a very small I mean dark colored hole like structure. So that structure is the pupil and surrounding that structure whatever you can see that is the iris. Next is the lens and a lens has to be present because it is due to the presence of this lens. Here you can see the lens. This is the lens. So it is due to the presence of this lens that image formation is possible. Now basically whatever we are seeing that is nothing but the concept of image formation. You would have studied about the concept of image formation by eye in your class 9th physics. If you want you can refer those videos as well that how image formation take place. We all have studied about the image formation by convex lens and concave lens in our physics. So in a very similar way even inside our eye we have a lens and that lens helps in image formation. So whatever we see an image is formed inside our eye and then that image is sent to our brain and the brain interprets what is that image all about and we get to know whatever we are seeing. So that is the simple concept of eye. So you can understand how important the eye lens is. Ciliary muscles. So wh where are these muscles? These are the muscles which are present here. So here you can see some yellow colored muscle like structures. So these are the ciliary muscles which actually are present on both sides of the lens. So it actually helps to keep the lens in place. So that means it controls the position of the lens. Next is the vitreous humor that is the fluid which fills this entire space inside the eye behind the lens and the retina. So this is the lens and then this is the retina, the innermost layer. In between there is nothing, only a gel 
like fluid so that gel like fluid is known as vitreous humor so that is vitreous humor and the optic nerves so optic nerves these are the nerves which are arising from uh, the posterior end of the eyeball so this entire spherical structure is the eyeball the entire ball like that is the eyeball so this eyeball why does the eye doesn't look like a sphere from front that is because that entire ball has been fit into a socket so this was the socket which was the orbit just now i was telling you right so since it is fit into the socket so when you see somebody from front you are only able to see this front portion of the eye so you are not able to see the entire sphere because that is put inside that socket now these optic nerves they arise from the posterior end that is towards the back side of the eye and it connects to the brain so these nerves connected to the brain so whatever image is formed by the lens that is then that information is then passed in the form of electric impulse through the optic nerves and then the brain interprets that image and tells us what we are seeing so these are the various components of the eye so now we will talk about the layers of the eye and each of these components in detail so we will talk about their structure we will talk about their function so first let us talk about the different layers of the eye so let us first talk about the outermost layer that is sclera so it is the outermost layer so here let us start labeling as well so that you get a very clear understanding so this outermost layer is sclera so it is a dense connective tissue the next layer which is choroid that is the middle layer and it is comparatively thinner when compared to the outermost and the innermost layer so it is thin towards the posterior side so towards this side it is quite thin but as it comes towards the anterior side the same layer thickens up to form these ciliary muscles so if you see the same layer thickens up to form the ciliary muscles so we can say that the ciliary muscles are formed from the uh, choroid layer that is the middle layer so this is the middle layer or the choroid layer the third one is retina which is the innermost layer and this is a very important layer why because this is the place where the image is formed as i said the lens will form image so where will the image form the image is formed on the retina so image is formed here now this retina is made up of three layers of cells what are those layers ganglion cells bipolar cells and the photoreceptor cells so these are the three layers of cells which are present in the retina so this way also retina is very important because the photoreceptor cells photoreceptor means those cells which receive light so they are actually present in retina now for image formation you need light right so you need some cells who can receive light so that is done by retina so that means retina also plays a very important role in the functioning of the eye now we will talk about retina in little more detail in one of the slides where we will talk about each of these photoreceptor cells the ganglion cells and also the bipolar cells now photoreceptor cells there are two types of cells which are present in the retina that they are called rods and cones and each of them have got specific photopigments because of which they can act as photoreceptor cells so we will talk about them a little later so before that thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again